And as far as the Michael Vick situation go, my question would be, why is it not okay for Michael Vick to kill dogs or fight dogs, but it's okay for white men to take their sons into the woods? Mm -hmm. I'm very disappointed in Benjamin Crump because I already felt that he was the type of attorney that only goes after big money cases. My mm -hmm. assistant told me that while she was speaking to the uh, Brendan's uh, adoptive mother, the white woman, that she asked her, would she be willing to let Dr. Umar review his psychological evaluation? She told my assistant that she'll check with the attorney to see if the attorney thinks it's a good idea. If you're trying to save your damn son, mm -hmm. what do you care that a psychologist review the psychological reports? And right. then she told me, she also told me that the white woman said that uh, uh, Dr. Umar has made some racist statements about me and other people involved in the case. What, what, uh -huh. what are you working In order to keep it legitimate. In fact, Bob and David, to your question, we're having a major protest. Hmm. And I want as many African people in the country and around the world to join us. We're going to be in Bunnell, Florida. B-U-N-N-E-L-L. -L. Bunnell, Florida. There's a brother by the name of Brendan Depper. You probably heard me talking about this. You might have seen the news. He can be sentenced to 30 years in prison for uh, assaulting his classroom aide, the oh. teacher's aide. This happened on the day Malcolm X was executed. February the 21st, 2023, they took his video game from him. He assaulted the teacher's aide. He's been locked up in an oh. uh, adult prison wow. since that time, and he's going to be sentenced on January the 31st, January the 31st at the courthouse in Bunnell, Florida, and I'm going to be there with one of my organizations, two of my organizations, a national movement to save black boys, mm -hmm. as well as the National Independent Black Parent Association, uh, Bob and David. We're going to protest because we believe that although we don't you know, like the fact that he assaulted the teacher, that young man had a lot of special needs, Bob and David, mm -hmm. that was not being appropriately taken care of mm -hmm. by the school system or the mental health system in Florida. Mm -hmm. So he is as much a victim as the white woman he assaulted. Oh, that's the key phrase right there, he assaulted a white woman. That's why they want to and, lock him up. That's why, you, and, and by the way, uh, what, what's the attorney who does all the police murder cases Crump. for pay? Benjamin Crump. Benjamin Crump, the, 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 the white foster mother, because he was adopted by two white people. Mm -hmm. The white adoptive mother told me Benjamin Crump refused to help. Why? And the NAACP also refused to help. Why? They say because... You already know. You just answered the question yeah, yourself. a white woman was assaulted. It's a white woman <laughs> with a big, black, dark-skinned black boy. <laughs> so nobody wants to I touch it yeah. because they don't like the optics. But I'm not afraid of the optics because yeah. I'm, I'm not in a popularity contest. <laughs> this black boy should not go to jail for 30 years, Bob and David. He should have had a one-to-one -one aid. He should not have been in that school. That school did not have the appropriate supports to properly educate him. He should have been at a private school, but they didn't want to pay for it, and that's why he ended up in that school. He's diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. He has conduct disorder, ADHD, autism, anxiety disorder, and a few other conditions. He was taking about four or five medications every day, Bob and David, that boy had no right being in that school. With all of those, could just, I, I want to also welcome to the show uh, Patrick and Jadu. He's down there in the corner. Patrick, hey, Patrick, how you doing? And Patrick yeah, himself, how are you doing, brothers? Patrick himself is a behavior specialist. Now, when you said that the child could have been, uh, should have been put in a private school, if you have a child that has special needs, uh, is it difficult to get them in a private school and have the state pay for it itself? Uh, yes and no. I say no because the law clearly states mm -hmm. special education law, which is federal law, and then you have the state law that accompanies it, clearly states that if a school district cannot meet the needs of a child, mm -hmm. they must pay for that child to go to a school where their needs can be met. That mm -hmm. is the law. Mm -hmm. If Brendan Depper was where he should have been, Bob and David, that teacher would have never been attacked. Yeah, because, as you mentioned, he was a victim. He had all those things going against him. 
And then when he reacts, because that's what it was, that it was a reaction. You said he tried to take his phone or his uh, iPad or something, and he reacted to it. You know, so maybe he didn't feel like he wanted to have stuff taken from him. So he fought back. Well, well this is about to blow your mind. Let me give you two facts of this case that's going to blow your mind. First of all, I want to let everybody know that we're going to be at the Kim C. Hammond Justice Center, 1769 East Moody Boulevard. 1769 East Moody Boulevard in Boonell, Florida, on Wednesday, January the 31st. The protest that I will be leading will start at 10 a.m. His sentencing hearing, hearing Baba David, begins at 1.30. The protest will be at 10 a.m. His sentencing hearing will begin at 1.30. So what we're probably going to do is end the protest at 1 so as many of us as possible can go inside and actually witness what we hope will not be a legal lynching of another black boy. So if anybody needs that information, please text me. I'm looking for security. Fred Hampton Gun Club, you know, Huey P. Newton Gun Club, Khalid Abdul Muhammad Gun Club, New Black Panther Party, regular brothers and sisters. We need y'all down there to show love and support because we're sick and tired of them destroying the lives of black boys and girls unjustifiably. This is actually the first protest I've ever led myself, Bobby. Mm -hmm. This is my very first protest, but it won't be the last because mm -hmm. it's time for us to get off YouTube and get into these streets mm -hmm. and start fighting to save our people. But the two points that I wanted to bring to you, Baba David, number one, this is going to blow your mind. Mm -hmm. The video game that was taken from Brendan that led to the teacher's assault was requested by the school to be brought into the school and used as an incentive. So why did they want to take it from him then? Well, I guess because he, maybe he wanted it at a time when he wasn't supposed to use it. Mm -hmm. But my point is, Bobby David, look at the irony. Look at the irony. The school asked for the game to be brought into the classroom. The school requested it. If the school never requests that game, Bobby David, he never gets into the situation. Mm -hmm. So where is their responsibility in all of this? And the other point I wanted to give you, two white children in the same high school, I believe, also assaulted their teachers. Neither one of them spent a single day in jail. No suspension. They body got suspended, but they yeah. did not go. And, and when you say sentencing, so that means that he's already been convicted. He's already been convicted. And listen to this. His white attorney, and I don't know if he was a public pretender or if the parents hired him, but his white attorney, Baba David, Convinced him to plead guilty oh, to the charge. Oh, my goodness. A plea bargain. That's how, another way they get it. Bobby David, he's damn near a modern-day Emmett Till, Bobby mm, David. And how old is he, Bob? He's damn near a modern-day Emmett Till. Mm, mm, mm. Listen, we got to take a break. My producer is telling me that we, we're running a little behind uh, schedule on our break. And when we come back, we're going to continue the conversation in the studio on Zoom with Dr. Umar E. Fatunde Johnson. On the, uh, in the in the wings is uh, Patrick and Jadu, our uh, co-host here at New World View. And also, when we, we, want to, we continue to talk about the protests that Dr. Umar Johnson is going to be leading, but I'm also concerned about the uh, brother that was uh, suspended from school and got an in-school su suspension for the way that he was uh, had his hair. But we're going to talk about all that and more when we come back. If you want to join the conversation, you can do so by dialing 215-634-8065. Uh, so I want you to stick your state. Don't you dare go away. We'll be right back. Anyhow, um, uh, we were talking about uh, Dr. Umar Johnson says he's going to be leading the protest in uh, Florida. And uh, let me see, in Barnell, B-U-N-N-E-L-L, -L, Barnell, Florida. Is that correct? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. But no, Florida at the Justice Center. Okay. Uh, in uh, Florida, 1769 East Moody Boulevard. We will begin the protest at 1 o'clock on Wednesday, January the 30th. Excuse me. Mm. We will begin the protest at 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. 10 a.m. on Wednesday, January the 31st. And uh, Brendan Depper's sentencing before the judge is at 1.30. So the pro protest will be 10 to 1. And then we will go inside for the hearing at 1.30, and we hope it will not be a lynching. Also, if anybody lives in that area of Florida, uh, we're, we're looking for a place to organize and travel to the protest. Mm -hmm. It'll probably be Jacksonville, because Jacksonville is only an hour away. 
and it's a strong American African mm -hmm. population there. Mm -hmm. So we're probably going to meet in Jacksonville and drive down to Brunel, which is an hour away. Mm -hmm. And um, will it be like a, a, a motorcade from Jacksonville to Brunel? Uh, that's what I'm hoping. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm meeting with some elders now in Jacksonville, uh, supporters of mine. You know, I've been going to Jacksonville for a while. I get a lot of love there. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to text everybody, too. I'm going to get a flyer done up uh, before the month is out. And I'm going to text text that out to everybody in Florida. I'm hoping the whole Florida will come out and, and, and show love. But yeah, that's a great idea, Bob and David. Thanks for saying that. We need to go ahead and have a carpool mm -hmm. from Jacksonville down to Brunel. And then when well, we get Jacksonville, maybe have a post, you know, a post sentencing uh, town hall meeting. And I'll, I'm going to be lecturing anyway in Jacksonville the very next day, Bob and mm -hmm. David, on February the 1st, the first day of Black History Month, mm -hmm. I will be speaking in Jacksonville anyway. So, you know, we're just going to consider this a two day event to protest on Wednesday and the Black History Month kickoff lecture on Thursday. All right. All right. So now how old is the young man? He's 18 now. He was 17 at the time of the incident. And guess what I just learned the other day, Bob and David, because I wasn't paying attention. My birthday is August the 21st. This young man's birthday is August the 22nd. Wow. <laughs> wow. August the 21st. He's a fellow Leo. Guess what else, Bob and David? He was born August the 22nd, 2005. Let me tell you why that's relevant. If you remember, Bob and David, I first went to Africa in July of 2005. When I came back from Africa, I was there from July, August, July 1st to August 2nd. If you remember, when I came back from Africa in August of 05, I resigned as Minister of Education at the UNIA on Cecil B. Moore Avenue. Yeah. The Marcus Garvey program was on August the 17th mm -hmm. on Cecil B. Moore. I did not show. I don't know if you remember. It's a whole big controversy. Mm -hmm. I didn't go because of some of the negativity I was dealing with from some of the reactionary personalities in the organization at that time. My birthday was a couple of days after that. So that whole week was a very historic and controversial week. And he was born the day after my birthday the same year I took my first trip to Africa. Wow, that's phenomenal. But you know, when you talk so about... I believe that means I'm supposed to fight for this young man, Bobby. Dick. That's right, that's right. Now, uh, when you talked about the Marcus Garvey uh, uh, UNIA, and I, I'll pass by there often, and, and I often say w there must be some problem with the leadership because they still need so much work done there. And uh, it's, it's amazing how they can't find enough well I, can, I it's not hard to believe because you can't find enough volunteer uh, construction workers yourself i mean contract i can't just, even find them and i'm paying them, I can't can't even them. Pay them. <laughs> that's amazing I don't, I don't know what we're going to do i don't know what we're going to do as a people it's not like uh things are getting better for us overall i mean and the and, and, are... and i'll say this to you baba i'll say this to you you know and i don't even want to say it but i got to say it when I was at the UNIA mm -hmm. and Cecil B. Moore until 2005, mm -hmm. we kept trying to get the building renovated yes. and rest in peace to all the elders because most of them are ancestors now. Yes. They fought us against it. They, they kept fighting against us renovating the building. But why? I don't know. I don't know. I, I do not. I, I don't know. And I can't speak to what's been happening in the past 18 years because obviously yeah. – you know, when I resigned as Minister of Education and the first vice president of Division 121 in Philadelphia, I went and I joined the Baltimore Division. Okay. And then Bob Tunji, the elder who ran the Baltimore Division, he became an ancestor two Decembers ago. And then that's when I joined the Detroit Division. Okay. You know, so I can't speak to what's been going on in Philly because I'm not really interested in rejoining Philly mm -hmm. unless they got some new leadership. You know, yeah, I might right. consider it, you know. Yeah, that's right. But um, we as a people are so hung up on titles mm -hmm. and who's in control that we have people in institutions. <laughs> Building institutions, not worrying about who's in control. That's right. But everybody's worrying about ego domination. That's a big problem mm -hmm. in black organizations. I don't care if it's the black church. Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's the conscious movement. 
I don't care if it's the grassroots organizations. It's all about who's in charge and whose ego is the biggest. Wow. Not the big picture, but whose ego is the biggest. Not, they can't see the big picture. Uh, but, but now I wanted to talk back about this student. Now, uh, had you heard about the young man that uh, was suspended because of his hair? And they, they demanded that he cut his hair in school. And I've he heard about several <laughs> yeah. uh, students, and I know the one you're talking about, but there's been several hair incidents. And here's what I don't understand, Bobby David. As you know, I've been giving out free support for black parents when it comes to educational issues for over 20 years. Yes. So I don't understand how those parents have not heard of me. Yes. And even if they don't know the law, have not reached out to me. This was a quick fix. Yes. The U.S. Constitution is clear, and federal court has, you know, legislated on this. The way you dress in school, public and charter school, the way you dress is a constitutionally protected freedom of speech action under the First Amendment. Mm -hmm. The, the only way the school, mm -hmm. and I want everybody to hear me on this, the only way the school can force you to change your hair in a public or charter school, we ain't talking about Catholic schools mm -hmm. and independent schools. They can dictate the dress code. Mm -hmm. But in publicly funded schools, the only way they can make you change your hair or change your dress code is if the, the clothes you're wearing or the hairstyle you have, Bobby David, and I want to be very specific to this, mm -hmm. it must cause a substantial disruption to school operations. S-D-S-O. I'm going to say it again. Substantial disruption to school operations. Mm -hmm. So if these parents knew their rights, they could have ended this in one day. Or they could have got a lawyer who could have sued and ended this very quickly. How is that young man's hairstyle causing a substantial disruption to school operations? And if it isn't, they cannot force him to change his hair. That is the law. Mm, that's amazing. But yet and still, the school district of those uh, challenges, are, are they the ones that's violating the law? They the violate student. the law. But what do we know about the law, Bobby David, going back to Dr. King and the Civil Rights Act? You know, segregation was illegal since the 14th Amendment. Mm -hmm. You know, segregated busing, segregated restaurants, segregated movies. It was already declared unconstitutional. But what do we know about the law? It never fights for black people. Wow. Black people got to use the law and fight for themselves. Yeah. So until we get some black parents who are willing to fight and not let them, you know, bully their children around, this is the situation we're going to go through. That's amazing. We have some callers on the phone line. If you want to join the conversation, you can call us by, and you can join the conversation by calling us at 215-634-8065. They want to be, that's, Maurice, that's what I wanted to ask you about. Last week I talked about, I asked a question about Sherelle Parker, the newly elected mayor, and I asked, you know, did anybody have any concerns about that? I said, because I'm concerned with the, uh, she campaigned on stop and frisk. And now they're talking about a new law banning uh, ski masks. And I said, well, who do you think that they're going to target those policies towards, Dr. Johnson? You know, with the ski mask law, I kind of knew that was coming. Mm -hmm. You know, because even I said to myself, with all these COVID masks going on, for those who operate, you know, in the shadow of the law, you know, or beyond the law, that would give them an advantage you know, to do some of the things that they do, mm -hmm. you know, to make money illegally. So I kind of knew the ski mask law was coming. I mm -hmm. did. Mm -hmm. But in terms of the school laws, they don't change as quickly as other laws do, you know. And, 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 and not to say that they won't start changing more quickly, but they tend not to change as quickly, you know. And so for me, I just think black parents really need to – the bottom line is, Bobby David, we don't take – our children's education as seriously as we should. Uh -huh. We just don't. We don't as a people. We don't. Now, for those parents who are fortunate enough to have high achieving children, they may take their education seriously. But a lot of our parents who have average learners and below level learners and disabled learners, they are not as involved or as knowledgeable as they should be. And for me, it's no excuse. 
because I've been traveling and teaching too long. I've written two books with all the information in there. If they just had my book, Bobby David, they would have knew how to deal with the hair situation. Yes. If they just had my book, yes. they would have So for me, it's no excuse because you got somebody who's filling in that gap. Now, if we didn't have anybody filling in that gap, for example, we don't have a black educational attorney, not a major one. Mm -hmm. That's a gap that needs to be filled. But in terms of having a school psychologist, an educator who's filling the gap as much as I can without the law degree, it's no reason for these kids to be getting expelled out of schools illegally. That is an illegal expulsion. Mm -hmm. You cannot expel a kid because they got locks in their hair mm -hmm. if it's a public school unless you can prove it's causing a substantial disruption. It doesn't matter if it goes against the school code. The school dress code cannot undermine federal law. And the law says that the way a child dresses and the way a child wears their hair is a part of their freedom of speech. And if it's not affecting the school, you can't make them cut their hair. and You damn sure can't expel them for it. Well, one of the things that they say that they, uh, the dress code says that the, the males could not wear their hair uh, with a shoulder lift. And I said, that don't make no sense because it's a lot of white males that have shoulder length hair. And then that's all a good point. And they ain't tell them to cut their hair. <laughs> that's right. And there's a whole lot of white females. Which, uh, and so that's discriminating right there. How come a girl can wear her hair shoulder length, but I can't wear mine? Especially now when they pushing this non-binary, yeah. gender neutral nonsense. That's right. So how are you going to be pushing this non-binary crap? and tell black boys they can't wear their hair shoulder lift. That's, That's right. a complete contradiction. That's, listen, we got one thing we cannot contradict. We got to play commercial break right now. And when we come back, we will continue the conversation here in the studio with Dr. Umar Johnson. And uh, Patrick, we want to see if you have any questions for Dr. Umar. So everybody yeah, I have, a, I, have a comment. I, have a, I have a comment and a suggestion. When we come back, yeah. uh, we got to take a break. So stick and stay, don't you dare go away. We'll be right back cross to you at this time with uh, Dr. Umar Johnson. But Patrick, you say uh, you had a question for Dr. Johnson? Yes, I, I have a comment. Um, so I heard Dr. Johnson talk about somebody throwing a brick mm -hmm. uh, to the window mm -hmm. uh, of, of, the, of the building that is being renovated for, uh, for, the, for the school. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, to me, <clears throat> that really uh, signifies who uh, Frederick Dobras is. It's a sign of resilience. Mm -hmm. uh, they can throw the stone so many, so many times, mm -hmm. but that man, that school is gonna survive, mm -hmm. just as Frederick Douglass survived. Wow. If I and, and I want to suggest that they leave that part of the window, if it is not because of the cold, <laughs> you leave that part of the window as a scar, the scar that Frederick Douglass had that wasn't even visible that he suffered but he was able to fight for for the civil rights mm. so that is what i want to say about that person who tore that stone that bricks is a son of resilience just as frederick douglas was very resilient that was, uh, he that suffered that was, everything uh, but he, he survived it mm -hmm. that's very interesting that's a great uh, idea baba that's a great idea However, we just got the window repaired uh, the day before yesterday. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> and I think we're going to put some gates on it. I think we're going to yeah. put some uh, bars on the windows. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So now what about the uh, c community in which the school is located? Uh, how's the reception there? Uh, it's been positive. Wilmington, Delaware have been a very big support. Mm -hmm. Even though the contractors have been a big disappointment, mm. the people themselves, the brothers and sisters in Wilmington, they have been nothing but supportive. Every time I'm outside, they stop, they pull over, we talk. Mm -hmm. They're very much looking forward to the school opening for their children, and they're very much looking forward to being a part of the many community programs that we're going to operate here. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's super. I was just in the studio uh, during the commercial break, and I was uh, our producer uh, Nicholas and, R and Rhonda. They, they were showing me the uh, video from the young man that was uh, in Florida, Dr. Johnson, and they were showing me that he was uh, six feet tall, six, six feet, foot six, six six. That's a big guy for AT. And I said, and if he attacked a, a, a white woman, so one day they didn't shoot him. Now, I'm going to share this with y'all right now, and I would love y'all input. Mm -hmm. And anybody who's listening to today's conversation, mm -hmm. they could text message me with their input. 
at 215-989-9858. And here's my question to you, Baba David, Baba Patrick, and everybody else listening. As I said, Brendan Depp, the 18-year-old who's facing a possible sentence of a 30-year maximum, mm. January 31st mm. in Brunel, Florida, will be there with the protest 10 to 1 on Wednesday, January the 31st. His white adopted mother reached out to me by email. And she reached out to me again by text message a couple of days ago by email about a week or two ago. I'm torn as to whether or not I want to work with her because I'm disappointed in the way her and her husband raised him and the way in which they allowed the system to exploit him and not really get justice for him. In other words, they didn't do their job well as adoptive parents mm -hmm, at all. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just as upset with them as I am with the school system down there, the mental health system, and the criminal justice system. My question to you, brothers, is do where do you stand? Do you feel we should just stay independent and do our own protests and not even engage these white folks? Or do you believe I need to have that conversation with her before I move forward, I'm just kind of torn because I'm so disappointed in how they let this boy get taken advantage of. They've been his foster parents since he was an infant. Excuse me, adoptive parents since he was an infant. Mm -hmm. How the hell did y'all let this get out of hand like this? Mm -hmm. Six foot six, that boy should be on a football field somewhere. He should be playing for Deion Sanders mm -hmm. up in Colorado somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, how the hell he, we end up with this type of a problem? You know, but where do y'all stand on that? Do y'all? Because my my concern is if I speak with her, she could go public with that, which mm. is not a problem. Mm -hmm. But she could later try to say I'm distancing myself from Dr. Umar for X Y Z. See, I don't want to set up a situation mm -hmm. that allows her to cancel me when I really don't want to be bothered with you anyway. But where do y'all stand on this situation? Oh, uh, Patrick, you you have so yeah. So so this is how I come in. Um, you know, collaboration is very key in this situation. And there are some things that you do not know yet until you speak to that woman. Uh, you can make your, your assessment and, and, and make a determination how best to really, um, uh, I mean, uh, um, really uh, face this issue. Uh, it's not going to make you stop what you're doing, but you, you, you get a better understanding by talking to this woman so that when you get in there, you really know that what you are doing is exactly what needed to be done. So I think to me, I will talk to her. It will not change your, it will not change what you want to do. I understand. Okay. I understand that you think that he should talk to her. And I also understand uh, where Dr. Umar Johnson could have some concerns because if she's white, the husband is white, they may want to bring in their own white support system. And then that, do you have white folks? And, and, and I don't know how Dr. White feels about that, working along with other white folks on black issues. Not interested in that because <laughs> I, don't, I don't, you know, I'm not a big fan of the integrated protests mm -hmm. because as we learned with George Floyd, I mean, of course, there'll be white folks there to show support and we're not going to stop them. Mm -hmm. But for me, we got to keep this a black thing. And this doesn't go against you know, Patrick's advice in terms of the conversation. Mm -hmm. But what you're speaking of, Baba David, you know, is how they may want me to collaborate mm -hmm. with some white liberal nonprofit, mm -hmm. you know, organization who wants to do their protest too. I'm not really interested in the integration mm -hmm. because I think it waters down the racism that is at the heart of this situation, mm -hmm. you know. And the other concern too, to be honest with you gentlemen, some of my supporters who have been following this case and I do urge everybody to go on the internet and Google Brendan Depa. Please Google the case and read it. B R E N D A N, Brendan Depa, D E P A. He has the last name of his white adoptive parents. Mm -hmm. But uh, some people are concerned that the white adoptive mother may care more about saving her reputation mm -hmm. in the community mm -hmm. than trying to save him. From a 30-year sentence. Not to say she don't care about him at all. But some people are saying, is she reaching out to you because she want to save her son? Mm. Adoptive son? Or is she reaching out to you because she's trying to clean up the image? Because she, she's not on nobody's best person's list. The white people are mad at her because your black son beat up a white teacher. 
So the white people are mad at her, and the black community is mad at her, because how did you let this go so far without stepping in and making sure this boy gets what he needs? Well, we got to, we so, uh, wait, wait, Patrick, we got to take another break. We'll get to the top okay. of the hour. We got to do a station identification. <laughs> and, and then when we come back, we're going to come right to you, Patrick. So everybody stick yeah, and stay. You. We'll be right back. Yeah. Uh, Patrick, you said you had a question? Yes, I, I, it's kind of a statement. Um, you know, for me, you know, sometimes when it comes to uh, white people fighting for black people, mm -hmm. sometimes we make the assumption that they know what to do. Mm. Sometimes they are in a very difficult situation because the fact that they might have the money to adopt a black kid does not necessarily mean they understand their black culture mm. to be able to fight fights to that level because don't forget they have their own culture and they, are, they have their own community that they are in they only have the money or the opportunity to adopt a black man now this thing happened how do they do this it's beyond them they are now seeking support from somebody who really understand the black perspective mm -hmm. so dr omar if this woman is asking you or asking to talk to you, I think he she is seeking advice from you as to how to proceed. They don't know how to do that. Mm. Good well, point, brother brother Patrick. I would I would counter with that slightly to say that I believe the only reason why she reached out to me is because I'm her last hope. Mm. <laughs> Benjamin Crump turned her down, mm -hmm. the NAACP turned her down. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure Al Sharpton isn't going to touch mm -hmm. it because of the optics of a white woman mm -hmm. having been attacked by a black boy. I'm sure he's heard of it, and he ain't came out. Mm -hmm. I'm her last hope. I don't think she wanted to reach out. I think that I was the only person advocating for him online, and because Ben Crump and the NAACP turned their back, I think that's what brought her to me. That, that, that doesn't affect me at all. I, mm -hmm. I don't care because I understand being unapologetically African as I am that's the way things work, and I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure that me reaching out to this woman who clearly hasn't done a good job in the past 18 years with this black boy, you know, I just want to make sure me, me reaching out to her doesn't create a set of circumstances that could end up undermining my ability to actually help him at this point because he is now technically an 18 year old mm -hmm. and so that mm -hmm. kind of changes things as well because the question also comes up should i be trying to get in touch with him in the prison versus communicate with the mother who was no longer the legal authority since he is now a young man mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i was wondering how he's 18 years old and still in school what kind of how they raise him up they didn't raise him up in, in the regular schooling system by 17. well remember he would have graduated at 17 right. probably he would have graduated this past, you know, summer. Oh, if he had so he got caught on up. time. He was on time. Oh, okay, all right. You know, academically, but he's been locked up since February 21st, oh, the wow. day that the incident took they place. They have him incarcerated all this in, time? In an adult prison. They had no bail? The bail is $1 million. Oh, my wow. goodness. Now, let me give y'all a comparison. Oh. Let me give y'all a quick comparison. First of all, Florida adjudicates black boys as adults certifies mm. black boys as adults more than any other state in america he was initially charged as a juvenile and once the video got put on youtube white people started expressing wow. you know their outrage at the privileged white woman attacked by the black boy and don't get me wrong no woman should be attacked no matter what their color is mm -hmm. but he was charged as a juvenile initially and when white folks expressed their outrage, it got upgraded to an adult. Wow. Mm. 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 Oh, but before I go, I want y'all to see the injustice here. Now, let me give you a comparison. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you all are familiar with A.J. Owens, the oh, no. black mother who was shot and killed by the old white woman in the stomach. She was shot in the stomach yeah. through a locked metal door That's in right. Florida That's right. last year. <laughs> Yeah, that white woman could get a maximum of 30 years in prison. So here's the question. Should Brendan Depper, a 17 year old boy at the time of the crime, who who was, you know, not getting what he should have gotten himself, a victim himself. Should he be able to go to jail for 30 years for attacking a teacher 
when a white woman will only go to 30 years maximum for shooting and killing a black mother in front of her children. They can yeah. get the same sentence. How is that fair? How in any how it's can not. anybody see that as fair? And he ain't killed nobody. He didn't kill nobody, didn't have a gun, didn't shoot nobody. That white woman shot and killed that black mother in front of her children, and she could get a maximum of 30. He can also get a maximum of 30. How is that fair? Even... It doesn't even weigh the same. It's not even the same. It's not... not even the same, Queen. Not even the same. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. And that's why we're going down there to have the protest on January the 31st. As I said, this will be my first protest that I've led. I've been a part of plenty of protests, mm -hmm. but this will be the first one that I've actually led myself because we have to stop letting these schools and this school-to-prison pipeline destroy the lives of our children. If he goes to jail for 30 years, you know what that means? He's 18, 28, 38, 48. When he get out of prison, he'll be my age. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just cause he, uh, because he maybe pushed or slapped a, a person. Yeah, he punched her. He did punch her. But guess what? Guess what? I'm sorry. But guess what, really what? what y'all? Why haven't we seen the video in the classroom that shows exactly what happened that precipitated this incident? We haven't even seen the classroom video. All we have is the teacher and the teacher's aide word of mouth. I believe the teacher's aide triggered that young man she triggered him mm -hmm. no child is going to get up and chase a teacher out the classroom teacher's aide throw her on the ground and start punching her in the head unless you did something to incite him mm -hmm. but there's no video they will mm -hmm. not show the video footage of what happened in the classroom yeah she may have been the instigator she right. was you know she was mm -hmm. you know she was mm -hmm. But listen, and I, I'll give you one more point, guys. Listen to this; going to blow your mind. I'm, I'm coming, Cliff. Not only did the school ask for the video game, and and Brendan's IEP is specifically states, "Do not take the video game out of his hand." That's wow. in his IEP. Wow. Bobby David is written into his IEP: "Do not take the video game, or this will trigger a violent reaction." Wow. It's in the damn paperwork. Oh, wow. my goodness, that's amazing. And none of that came wow. up as a defense. So I want to know so, where they got that lawyer from. So so, so uh, as, a, as a behavior specialist, though, this, uh, it, there's a problem of implementing this IEP. Yes. And, and that those who were supposed to implement this IEP do not understand or were not properly trained to understand the no, strategies. brother Patrick. They knew it, brother. Pat. No, 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 brother Pat. They knew what they were supposed to do. They didn't do it because he was a black boy. They didn't mm -hmm. care enough mm -hmm. to so, implement the IEP. Mm -hmm. So that, 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 so that is the, that is how you're gonna go for this defense. Either they were not properly trained, or they were trained. They did not implement the IEP properly, which is a violation. Mm. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that uh, Dr. Umar mentioned about one of the reasons the uh, woman called him is because she may not understand our culture. And I, it, it struck me because we do have a different cultural lifestyle than a lot of other people. In fact, I was recently heard where a Whoopi Goldberg was getting a lot of pushback and talking about canceling her because she had mentioned that uh, she doesn't blame Michael Vick uh, a lot for what he did because he was raised in the South and part of the culture in the South was dog fighting. That's what they did, and that was part of the culture. And But they thought that Michael Vick was the meanest person in the world because he had dogs fighting. And I'm saying, how could they think like that, but they think that hunting, killing animals is okay, but f fighting dogs is not okay. I don't like fighting dogs. I'm not uh, condoning it. I'm just saying uh, how hypocritical they are. They're going to say he's a monster for fighting dogs, but they are heroes for killing animals while they're out hunting. Uh, and it, That's insane, Baba David. Yes. But that just lets you know that the criminal justice system is a search and destroy mm -hmm. The criminal justice system is a search and destroy system. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They will pay attention to what they want to pay attention to and ignore the rest. And as far as the Michael Vick situation go, my question would be, 
My question would be, why is it not okay for Michael Vick to kill dogs or fight dogs, but it's okay for white men to take their sons into the woods and kill all kind of game, all kind of wildlife. They don't even eat the meat. They just kill them for sport. So why is the life of a dog valuable, but the life of a deer is not valuable? The mm -hmm. life of a lion is not valuable. Mm -hmm. The life of an elephant is not valuable. Mm -hmm. Look at the double standard mm -hmm. where if black people do it, it's wrong. If white people do it, it's called hunting. This is sport. <laughs> that's, that's amazing. That's what I couldn't understand. I couldn't get past that. But hey, like I said, we, when we catch up with the rules, then they change them. You mentioned Mike Vick. Is that, are they talking about that all over again? Uh, well, no. Well, he was just bringing it up as a comparison. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I was like, um, okay, he did the wrong thing, you know. And you're right. That could have been his culture. Uh, Patrick, somebody mm, said David, that. I said that because guys, there were a group of different guys who were doing dog fighting. Yes. You know, he got caught. It's over. Mm -hmm. and it should God, be, but they, bad. you know, when it comes to black people, they they want to cancel black people for anything they could think of. Anything so, at all. But you yeah. also got black people who want to cancel black people. Yeah. 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 So, and, and, and the thing about it is um, black people go along with it. Just yes, like, they do. They go right along with it. And, and they'll be out there betting on the dogs. <laughs> but you talked about a million-dollar bond. For this young mm -hmm. man, what's happening now with that whole case? Uh, what's happening right now, Queen Mother, is his white adoptive mother reached out to me by text message a couple days ago. This is her second time reaching out. She reached out to me by email about a week or two ago. Uh, uh, ben, ben Crump turned her down for mm -hmm. help. Mm -hmm. NAACP turned her down. Her and I'm that. very disappointed in Benjamin it. Crump. Mm -hmm. I'm very disappointed in Benjamin Crump because I already felt that he was the type of attorney that only goes after big money cases, and this proves it. Because Whoa. how don't you fight for this black boy? How yeah. do you not try so to get So why are they all turning him down? What are their reasons? Be because a big black boy who's six foot six, 250 pounds, beat up a white woman inside of a school. Okay, yeah. but they're talking see, about 30 years. Well, so they're talking about 30 somebody, years. Assault so battery. Somebody's got somebody's to step up. I agree with you, Queen, but I want you to see why the leading Negroes won't get involved. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's Do you see how this looks on the surface? If mm -hmm. you one of those go along, get alongs, black boy, attack white woman, you don't like the way that looks on your resume, mm -hmm. so you're not going to touch it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't want to touch that. That's, why, that's, that's why the NAACP won't touch it. Yeah. Because they like, this don't, you know, black boy, white woman, you know, that's the whole, that's the great American escape. That's the great American you know, taboo. Yeah, they don't want us around their it. women, touching their women, sexing their women, whistling and definitely at them. not hitting their women. <laughs> yeah, whistling wow. at them. But uh, we got another call. Now, to Patrick's point, to Patrick's point, Yes. the one reason I may need to speak with the mother, and y'all can let me, here's another question for all of y'all, and to mm -hmm. the good sister, you can chime in as well. Mm -hmm. okay. I want to be added to the court list to read a statement on Brendan's behalf. Mm-hmm just prior to the judges handing out the sentence on January the 31st. Mm -hmm. My question to y'all is this. Brendan is 18 years old. He's 18. Do you feel I need to go through his white adoptive mother for permission to do this? Do you think I deal only with Brendan to do this? Or do I go straight to that white attorney who I have not contacted yet? Some people say you might need the blessing of the mother. Some people saying he's 18 years old. Why do you need her blessing if he's 18? Some people saying just contact the lawyer and tell him you want to offer a statement to the judge before he hands out the sentencing. What do y'all think about that? Well, I'm, yeah. I'm going to let Patrick answer first. So this, he this has is what I know. He got his hand up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is what I think. Uh, even though he's 18, we, you already said that this boy has some disabilities. He yeah. might still... He might still Somebody might still have the power of attorney uh -huh. over him. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. So Good that's why you need you mm -hmm. need to get into what what does this boy have? Mm -hmm. Who is this person's spokesperson in terms of health, mm -hmm. in terms of whatever? Who, if the, the mother is, then the mother will give you all of that, and then you can actually do all of the things you want to do. Mm -hmm. Good point. Good point. Mm -hmm. And just to clarify, the mother did state to the media and on an interview that he is not intellectually disabled. 
Um, okay. So intellect, because remember now, the, the, the lawyer initially said he was incompetent to stand trial. That was the initial plea wow. from the lawyer, and the judge ruled him competent to stand trial anyway. Wow. So they're betting all against him. <laughs> they're Everything betting all against, against him. They betting all against them, and that's why I'm a little hesitant, Queen, about reaching out to this white adoptive mother. You you you, you see where I'm coming I, from? Because it's like, I understand. If you the mother, so she could make you escape. Go done more to help right, this right. boy. I, I, she could make I'm you escape. Go. She said uh, it I'm was that sold. it was that Dr. Johnson caused her to get put in jail for thirty years. Yes, sir. That's right. <laughs> I think going to the attorney would be a good idea. And actually, I don't know how competent the young man is, but you should be talking to him, letting him know you're going to speak. I'm on trying to reach him now. I'm yeah. trying to reach him now. But definitely the attorney mm -hmm. as well, so they can make sure you're included. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. I want to read a statement. You know, it may not sway the judge's mind. I heard the judge is not the most liberal. Mm -hmm. He seems to have a little bit of an issue with us. Mm -hmm. That's what I've been told. Mm -hmm. But I just want to lay out the facts of this case from the perspective of a certified school psychologist and a former school principal as to how the school system failed this young man. His IEP okay, team yeah. failed him. And he is as much a victim, if not more victim, than the white teacher's assistant who he attacked. Mm -hmm. Oh, Richard, we got, a, we got a caller on the phone line uh, that want to join the conversation. Uh, good afternoon, we'll caller. Um, what's your first name? Where are you calling from? Hello? Yes, you that's me? you. That's you. Okay, yes. Yes, my name is Bri. I'm calling from Germantown. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I just, I uh, was reading up about the, that student, Brendan, mm -hmm. and um, it seems very confusing without seeing all of the paperwork that they have on him. I know that uh, his uh, game or whatever it was that they took away from him was in his IEP, but you know, without seeing all of the documentation and his uh, evaluations and everything, um, it, it would be hard to make a call on, uh, it seems like he needed more, but it would be hard to make a call on whether, you know, if the parent just says he wasn't, um, uh, had low enough Intellectually IQ, disabled. Mm -hmm. Yeah, intellectually disabled. Um, the, I mean, we don't know who's competent and who's not as far as giving all this information. Maybe... Maybe even the attorney, his attorney, may not even be special education competent. You know what I mean? I don't think he is. I don't think yeah, he is because I don't understand how he told him to plead guilty. Hmm. I, right. There's one question oh, goodness, for that okay. attorney. Why did you influence this 17-year-old boy who suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety disorder, mm. autism, ADHD, and conduct disorder? Why did you influence him to plead guilty? after you told the judge he wasn't competent to stand trial. So if you told the judge he wasn't competent to stand trial, how did you turn around and tell him to plead guilty? I don't understand that. Mm, wow. uh, I, I, another, another, the other point I just wanted to make was that um, um, it, it's really touchy, I would say, uh, uh, um, working with the parent. I mean, I, I, uh, I don't know if there are any education black attorneys in florida that were that could reach we have time. no we have no I don't, I don't know of a single major black educational attorney in the country mm. wow mm. not it, one it, all it, of the cases wow. i've that's consulted on has been white attorneys we don't have and that's why i'm considering as much as i don't want to go back to school <laughs> become a lawyer i'm considering <laughs> going to law school for this very reason because i would have yeah. took this case in a heartbeat brendan's case is the reason I might have to go to law school. Wow, you ain't got no time for all that. You got, uh, you I don't, Bobby, <laughs> but I might, I, I might got to go to night school or something, because uh, this is crazy. It is. The, the, the only other thing I, I, I would um, think that might be able to help is, um, usually special ed students have some kind of, in the, in the community, they have um, parent advocates. I, I know in Philadelphia, there are parent advocates for, for parents who aren't um, special ed savvy, and a lot of the parent advocates um, really know a lot about special ed law. I don't know whether Brendan had one or not. Well, that's what I, that's what I would do. That that would be the role I would okay. assume in this case if I decide to reach out to the mother because mm -hmm. 
I'm more knowledgeable than a parent advocate being the actual psychologist. So right, that right, would be right. the role I would take in this. And plus, Dr. Justice is the number one parent advocate. Yeah, <laughs> Absolutely. I know that. I know that. But I was just wondering if there was one working with him all along. It doesn't seem like I don't was. think so. You know what? That's yeah. a great point, Queen. That's a great point. Mm -hmm. And if I speak to his mother, I'm going to ask her that. Mm -hmm. Did you yeah. ever have a parent advocate? And if not, why not? Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, think that, I think that the parent um, would, would understand if you politely told her, no, I can't really team up. I, I already have an agenda that I need to follow. And, I, and I'm hoping that you can understand if I need anything from you, I will definitely call you. And I'm going to try to help Brandon because that's what I plan to do anyway. But, but, but you know, please be understanding. And, and you know, she should, she should understand. Like, this is a touchy situation. And we know how sometimes blacks are treated in America. And if she could please just stand back and, and stand, you know, and if, if you need help, then you'll ask her for help. But she can't take over. So well, let me it. share this with you. Let me share this with you. And I want you all to tell me if this changes your opinion at all about me reaching out to her, uh, my two sisters, Brother Patrick and Baba David. Mm -hmm. I did have my assistant reach out to the mother about a week ago. I had my assistant call because I didn't want to be the one to make first contact. Because mm -hmm. once again, you're still dealing with a white female. Mm -hmm. My mm -hmm. assistant mm -hmm. told me that while she was speaking to the uh, Brendan's uh adoptive mother, the white woman, that she asked her, would she be willing to let Dr. Umar review his psychological evaluations? Exactly what you said. Mm -hmm. We asked her for the evaluations, and instead of saying, yes, he can have a copy of my paperwork, she told my assistant that she'll check with the attorney to see if the attorney thinks it's a good idea. If you're trying to save your damn son, mm -hmm. what do you care as to whether or not the attorney thinks it's a good idea that a psychologist review the psychological reports. Mm -hmm. And see, that's part of the reason why I'm having mixed feelings about this yeah. woman. If you want to save this boy, mm -hmm. why do you need to go ask the attorney his opinion if this is your son after the attorney made him plead guilty? Mm -hmm. Plead mm -hmm. guilty. Right. And right. then she told me, she also told me that the white woman said that uh, uh, Dr. Umar has made some racist statements about me and other people involved in the case. What, what, uh -huh. what are you worrying about my statements about racism? Why don't you deal with the fact mm -hmm. we're trying to save your son? Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm concerned about whether I want to touch base with her. Mm -hmm. I hear you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hold, hold yeah. on, everybody. Hold on, everybody. We got, we, got, we, got, we, got, we got to take a break. It's almost time. <laughs> when we come back, we're going to continue the conversation here in the studio with Dr. Ubar Johnson on yeah, the Zoom line good. with us. Also, is Janine Carter and Patrick and Jadu. So listen, everybody. Stick and stay. Don't you dare go away. You got this uh, straight from the icon. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, uh, before we run out of time, we got two more callers for right now. We have Purnell in North Philadelphia. Good afternoon, Purnell. How are you doing today? Good afternoon, Brother Dave. I'm loving the conversation. But I'd just like to say to Brother Umar, because he, uh, in no circumstances, man, should you woman. You have to listen to what she said to your, uh, your assistant, what she told her. You can't trust her, man. You understand what I'm saying? So my, yes, my next thing that I would say to you, the young man is 18 years old. Go and do whatever you need to do to contact him and talk to him and see how you feel about the conversation between you and him in regards to his circumstances. And then base your decision on what you need to do or even if you want to deal with his case at all. But his mother, under no circumstances, man, communicate with this woman. You can't trust her, brother. Well, I don't know. If, I don't know if he can. I don't know if he can talk to her. Trust her. I don't know. But I don't know if he can not talk to her because um, he. I, I, for, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think that Dr. Umar Johnson is doing this for her. He's doing this to try to save, save another black soul. Right. That's I understand that, but I still think that he would be able to do that without going through the mother. Because, like I said, I just don't trust her. That, that may be so, you know. I, it's about you know seeking justice for his son, and brother Umar is intelligent enough to to, to be able to know how to work around that. And I, I trust hmm. this brother, brother Umar, and I don't want to see you put yourself in that situation as far as dealing with the mother. That's just that's just my opinion. You don't have to listen. I don't have to be right, but I had to call and express my opinion to brother Umar according to the way 
Yeah, I'll feel about that brother now. All right, Purdue. Thanks so uh, much, man. I have, I have a question, though. Um, have you spoken to any of the people who did not want to take this case, and why did they not I, want to take I, it? I saw Benjamin Crump three weeks ago at the Black Farmers Conference at HBCU Delaware State in Dover. Mm -hmm. At that time, I was not aware mm -hmm. that Brendan's adopted mother reached out to him. Mm -hmm. Had I known that, yeah. I would have had a conversation with him face to face on the spot. Mm -hmm. But I did not know that he had reached out to, uh, that she had reached out to him and he declined to help. I wasn't aware of that because I had him front and center at the Farmers Conference at Delaware State a few weeks ago. I would have approached him directly. Mm -hmm. Now, the NAACP, as we all know, founded by Caucasians, mm -hmm. financed by Caucasians, mm -hmm. and controlled by Caucasians. Mm -hmm. So I'm not surprised at all as to the NAACP's reaction. Mm -hmm. But with Attorney Crump being based in Tallahassee, Florida, mm -hmm. that's his home state, wow. I would have thought. You know, he would have at least looked into it. Or, or he has a, a firm. He, he didn't have to do it himself. He could have had his firm look into it. Right, right. Well, but for some reason, know. they're not touching this case. Yeah. And that's my question. They don't because of the optics. Yeah. It's because of the optics. They don't get and there's no dirty. money in it. Yeah. Let, let us be very clear. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's no money in this. Mm -hmm. right. You see, this is about saving a black boy mm -hmm. from spinning the greater part mm -hmm. of his adulthood behind bars. Mm -hmm. There's no payday in this. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately for a lot of our attorneys, they don't take cases unless there's a payday behind it. Wow. Okay, we're gonna go to our next caller, RC in North Northwest Philadelphia. Hi, there's no Northwest, is it? Uh, hello. How you doing, Hi. RC? Good. I wanna thank Dr. Umar for everything he does. Mm -hmm. I think that the videotape that he's referring to should absolutely be seen. What he said about the IEP should be taken into consideration, and the lawyer should have taken that into consideration. It does not sound like he did. I would try to contact the boy since he is 18. I would not deal with the adoptive mother or father um, because you don't really know what's motivating them to contact you, and you don't know what the adoptive couple have done to the boy to make him like that. You named almost 12 different disorders that this boy has, and you said that they had him from infancy. So they have greatly influenced him. Mm. So they're the cause of why he is the way he is. Mm. I wouldn't deal with them. Mm. Thank you. Thank you so much, R.C. Mm. Yeah. Yes. yeah, Patrick. You know what? One thing I wanted to yeah. say quickly, Bob and David, mm. and again, for the listening audience, feel free to text me your opinions, uh, 215-989-9858. The one point where I could see I may have to deal with his mother, the one thing, is to get this case thrown out Mm -hmm. or to get it retried by a new attorney, that's right. I may need her for the corroborating information. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Patrick, Definitely. you had a comment? That's my, yeah. That was one of the things I suggested was getting a new attorney. Mm -hmm. Definitely yes. getting a new attorney. So. Yes, Let's Patrick. see. I'd love to hear how everything works out. Definitely. Oh, you posted. Mm -hmm. Definitely. January the 31st, uh, Boonell Court, um, and that is at 1769 East Moody Boulevard at the uh, Kim C. Hammond Justice Center protest from 10 until 1, Wednesday, January the 31st, and he will be sentenced at 1.30. And please pray for this young man, all of our mm -hmm. prayer warriors. Mm -hmm. Pray for this young man. We don't want him to become another statistic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Pat